Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, thank you for all of the kind words for last week's um, art gallery video. Uh, it was very pleasant to have my daughter join me. and um, But it does mean that this week we actually have a bumper crop of features and fixes for me to report on since I'm reporting on two weeks worth of work. Uh, first of all, a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors on Patreon. Uh, thank you all so much for your help uh, funding my work with Inkscape. Um, if it wasn't for your help, I don't think I would be able to spend not nearly as much time on Inkscape as I do. And um, to, to honor that, what I did uh, this week was I contacted my Patreons and I asked them explicitly what issues they wanted me to work on, especially if they were fixes for the 1.3 release. And um, yeah, we collected a, a an entire set of really great issues to get fixed. Um, so a big thank you to, I think it's about 10 Patrons who ended up contributing to that thread. And uh, not just reporting issues, but also talking about them, um, detailing exactly what the issues were and helping me understand what needed to be fixed. Um, if you'd like to join them, um, I'm, I put a link in the in the bottom. Um, the more help, the, the easier it will be to sort of run this as a, as a project. Um, but let's get into the actual issues themselves. So first of all, a bunch of fi fixes. Um, I fixed a PDF input uh, were uh, clipping regions that used to rely on groups had regressed since all of those PDF fixes that, that I put in. Uh, that has been fixed. Uh, PDF input when, Im when importing the sizes of the pages, uh, the page contents was incorrect. The pages themselves were actually the right size, but the contents were incorrect when the units were, were different. Uh, PDF output, uh, I fixed the uh, an order with um, paint order. So if you put the stroke in front or the stroke behind a fill uh, and export it to P PDF with text, it wasn't correct. Got that fixed. Um, I fixed a pro problem with batch e exporting SVG files where it was including clones um, that it shouldn't. It just was basically needlessly adding extra con content to, to the SVG export even though the page sizes were actually correct. Um, I stopped the, ex the batch exporter from um, overflowing the, the recent files list so that if you used the batch exporter, it no longer populated the recent files with all of the PNG files that you were exporting. Um, I fixed a bunch of issues in the export dialog where like the file, the default file, file names weren't appearing when you first opened the, the, the dialog and a few other uh, polishing fi fixes. So one of the things that came in from Patreon was basically the ability to control when the layer and page changes uh, when you're selecting items. So what happens in Inkscape currently is that whenever you select an object, the uh, code baked in and non-optionally changes the layer to be whatever layer that object is in. Uh, and it changes the page to be whatever page that's in. This can be quite convenient for a lot of workflows but it does cause issues. So uh, what I basically did is I, I, I made it a preference where you can basically set per tool whether when using that tool, selecting different objects will change the layer or the page. Uh, this should make it so that when you are editing things with the node tool, for example, and you just want to quickly edit um, you know, some, some nodes in a different layer, it won't change the layer on you unless you want it to. Um, I, the the one of the biggest reports from the from the Patreon uh, reports were the text toolbar. Now I have actually noticed this pro problem where the the font fa family and the font size and all of those style set, set settings that were in the text toolbar never reflected what you would actually end up getting if you created a new text object. The text object style seemingly was completely random compared to that text tool toolbar. This is because um, in the text tool, there are two styles. There's the desktop style and the tool style. And that text toolbar was always modifying the tool style, always. 
and yet we have a preference for whether you use the desktop style or the tool style when creating new text objects. Um, but of course, that's also the default, right? The default is to use the desktop style, not the tool style. So we have a toolbar whose job is to edit a style that most people will never be able to, to use. So that all needed to be fixed. That it basically had to be refactored because the assumptions in that text tool toolbar were just wrong and that had to be unpicked. I'm actually pushing that to be released in 1.3 since I think it is such a catastrophic user experience error that it should be uh, merged immediately, I think. Um, but it all works nicely now. You create tool, you whatever's in that tool, toolbar is what's in the style that is going to be used. Um, there's lots of fixes for grids. Uh, I actually did a refactoring branch, which will go into 1.3.1. But there's also a, a load of fixes for uh, a couple of crashes, snapping, um, default values, units, uh, undo, like a pile of different issues that cropped up. Thanks to everybody that reported issues with grids. Um, there's uh, I, I did add a new font updater for this will probably go into 1.3.1 as well, which is a it's a the developer team says that it's a feature, but it's really a user experience fix, which is that when you uh, add new fonts into your system, um, Inkscape should update its fonts list without you having to restart Inkscape first. This works in Linux. We do not have yet the code to make it work in Windows or Mac. Each operating system requires its own code paths. So uh, when it does go into 1.3.1, if we can't get a version for Windows and Mac, then unfortunately it's going to be a Linux only feature, but hopefully it will spur on further development. Um, I uh, fixed a, a the ability to save multi-line attributes in the SVG itself and, and made it so that the XML editor can actually save multi-line attributes. Uh, there's a multi-page fi fixes when you selected a, a size for pa pages, uh, the, the page size would get stuck, even if you manually then change the size to something else. Um, I remove the text padding when you unflow text. This is so that you don't end up with a stuck piece of text that has a padding and then you reflow it and uh, the padding makes it all disappear on you. Um, I also added a test to the test suite to test various text flowing options. Um, which is important to make sure that the, that functionality has stability. Um, I fixed the previous extension uh, actions so that they disable and enable correctly when they when there is no pre previous extension. Um, I repaired the inverse selection actions, which uh, had become uh, essentially unstuck, like they just disappeared and they needed to be brought back. That probably was was an accident, I think. Um, I fixed an issue with the icon pre preview where the icons weren't being updated when they when something changed on the debt on the document. Um, I fixed um, grouping objects sent objects right to the back of the document. Uh, that's been fixed. I added a new keyboard profile checker, um, which basically means that the the uh, key the keyboard pro profiles that are not the default pro profile. Um, we'll now have some checks run on them to make sure that they're consistent and they're not becoming outdated. Um, this is an automated system, which should hopefully mean that keyboard pro profiles will be kept, uh, you know, mostly up to date. So when a developer adds something new, they'll be forced to then also make sure that all of those other pro pro profiles are accounted for. Um, consistency being like one of the most important things when you have a selection between things like themes and keyboards and other things, that consistency is really where most of the work is the maintenance bur burden and why a lot of projects don't want to have these ki kinds of options. Um, but I think that these automated tools and test testing can actually fix some, some of that maintenance, uh, burden. Okay. So, um, that's what I have gotten up to. There's a, a couple of other things too, which I have not men mentioned, just like small uh, polishing fi fixes. Um, you can still tell me about the issues that you're having with Inkscape in Patreon. So please do keep on commenting if you like. Some of the issues that were reported are more features, things like organizing pa pages, which is still on my fe features list. And uh, I'm prioritizing fixes right now, but I'll be getting to fe features eventually. Um, but let's have a talk about some of the things that other developers have been getting up to in Inkscape. Raphael actually fixed the text flowing uh, bounding box when you were using padding. 
Uh, this is why I added that test, uh, essentially fixing um, strange loops and things that appeared in the way in which the uh, uh, that bounding box was calculated. Uh, this is the thing that I could never fix myself. So um, I asked Raphael and he was very kind to fix that issue for me. Um, PBS fixed it an issue with nested tra transforms when using the shape builder. So if you were shape building using uh, some some things in groups that had had tra transforms applied to them, you some, sometimes had very strange results. Uh, Thomas fixed some issues with gzip files. And um, there's actually a whole bunch of fixes which are waiting for review, which I'll mention in the future. Um, but that's about it for this week. Um, thank you very much for watching this update video. Uh, please do watch some of the interviews that I'm, I'm publishing with the other developers. I think it's very uh, interesting, uh, but also good to see some of these other faces and what they've been doing in Inkscape. This week's in interview is with Rene. Um, I'll try and link it in the uh, video. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you all next week.